guys, welcome to another episode of Chase Buddies! Okay, so we've come towards the end of our first season of the show. Um, so I think to end, since we talked about some pretty serious topics over the past few weeks, mm-hmm. uh, we'll end on a, a bit more of a casual note. So we're doing a Q&A episode. We put out a, um, a questionnaire on like Discord as well as like Instagram and for you guys to submit your questions and we got like a bunch of questions from you guys so we'll do our best to answer it today. Yeah, and some of those questions are really, really good. Mm. Yeah. And controversial. As well. Controversial. <laughs> we realise, right, after doing what? 10 episodes. 10 episodes, we never really talk <laughs> about ourselves. So I don't, want to, I don't know if anybody wants to know. Well, someone wants to know. This okay. uh, <laughs> savage yogurt crab, that's the username. Wants <laughs> to know savage <laughs> yogurt crab. <laughs> okay. Want to know about our personal and professional lives as, oh, as a cook. Our favorite yeah. subject, talk about ourselves. Your personal life, you want to talk about your relationship song? Wow, no, eh. <laughs> that, that's a long story. That's another okay, episode so on its own. That's a whole season of that on its own. You guys want to take I it? I think, first? yeah, Hong, Hong can Hong? go first. No, uh, okay. Shy la, first, shy suddenly very shy pula. Before I did FMB, I was actually a, an uh, architect uh, in in office nearby in Putaling Jaya. So I was doing the 9, nine to 5 thing. Even though in Malaysia, 9 to 5 doesn't exist. <laughs> so did you have culinary training? How did you transition from architect uh, to... Oh. So so actually, uh, at that time, it was just a hobby. La. Yeah, it was just It was just pure... Uh, interest and, and, and passion. La. I think I, I first... So self-taught la, to some extent. Uh, to, I mean, it's self-taught. La. You yeah, didn't go to mes- school. Basically, it's, I, di- I didn't go to culinary school at all. But you went to MasterChef. Right? Oh, ah, okay. Uh, okay. Three, uh, I don't know. Like, my bring, story I, I know, okay, long, make it brief. Make it brief. Okay, okay so brief. you did... I think your first foray into professional cooking was on TV. Okay, okay. I'll start from the beginning. Ah, ah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Rewind. <Why? laughs> <Or everything. laughs> Uh, when I was a teenager, never cook, never step in the kitchen. If I go in the kitchen, my mother would slap me because it's an insult to her. Then I left my house, went to study overseas. First, uh, came, uh, went to Italy. I thought the produce there was so crazy. Even a simple tomato on a, on a street vendor is world class. I started cooking. Good ingredients led me to cooking. I learned everything on YouTube. Then I came back. Uh, started my job as an architect. I thought it was very, very boring because uh, people just want to sell condo here. Repeat shit every day. Got scolded for being uh, lazy and everything. So I thought, okay, I'll leave. I I left thinking that I would start a restaurant, but I didn't. I joined a cooking competition. And then I learned another uh, phase to F&B, which is like, uh, most of the time, you're not doing uh, what you think you're supposed to do. Like, uh, I think what I learned from the TV show is more like, a lot of times in life, people just throw things at you and then you have to survive, right? So a lot of people think like, oh, I have passion in make, making uh, pizza or whatever, or I'm passionate about this and that. You come out to this real world, right? Someone may say, I want fried chicken. Then you have to cook <laughs> fried chicken. Nah. Oh, you put fried chicken on pizza. <laughs> yeah, you have, to put fried, you have to survive somehow. Then I, I left that TV show. Uh, I lost. I, I was depressed. And he now, didn't lose. He got second place. Second lah, bro. Okay. He got second and bro, place. To be clear, uh, first place 100k. Uh, uh, second place, get a microwave. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you lost, you lost, okay. I'm not even joking. Uh. Uh, then I left that. I came out. Uh, I wanted to do f and I started working for Burger Lab. Uh, my Burger Lab. At that time, I think the boss don't want to hire me. Yeah. <laughs> Let's not go into that yeah. story, okay? I hired you, okay? Yeah, I liked you, yeah. alright? I did not bully you. I did not call you stupid, okay? <laughs> that did not happen. So, I uh, did that for six months. Uh, it was a good experience, but I was too... Uh, I felt like I, I wanted to be my own boss too quick, right? So, with very little knowledge, I went out, started a food court unit, lost all my money, and then right at the end of it, uh, we converted the central kitchen, technically the central kitchen, into a small supper club. Which is what Grub is now. Yeah, which is what Grub is now, yeah. yeah. So, we, he started, the, he he helped me get the customers for the supper club. We started with 10, then he went for 20, 30, 40, then 100. I was even his uh, server for the first one week because yeah. he had no staff. Yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> he still owes me the pay for, for yeah. that week. <laughs> Okay, Burglet Boss, what's your Long side story, of the yeah. story? So you can go mine, mine is a lot shorter. Mine is very, very easy. Uh, so I studied mechanical engineering, graduated with a degree, never practiced uh, because I felt like I wanted to do my own thing. Uh, I had this epiphany while I was in the States. Uh, I was on this work and travel program. Uh, but what I learned while I was uh, in the States was that, hey, the service line is actually uh, a professional 
career can be a potential pro- professional career. At least in America, that, that's how I felt. Uh, you know, people value good service. People value you know the the the, the value add that you give them uh, in that dining experience, right? Um, so coming back to Malaysia, I was like, you know what? I, I want to dabble in into F and B. And uh, I got two of my other friends, Wiki and Chaming, to come together and say, hey, look, let's, let's open up a cafe together. So Burger Lab wasn't supposed to be a burger joint, it was supposed to be a cafe. Because my background was actually in uh, coffee. Uh, I didn't get trained, but I worked in Starbucks, I worked in a lot of different cafes. So I was one of the first few barista in Malaysia that was kind of just, you know, trying, trying out new things, lah, right? Uh, so I got confident in the cafe world. Uh, so I wanted to start my own cafe. Um, and between me, Chami, and Wicket, we said, hey, um, let's work in somebody's cafe first to, to learn a little bit more with the purpose of learning how to run a business. Because prior to that, I was just working as a staff, as a barista. So uh, I was working with uh, my friend uh, Kyung um, at Red Bean Bag. I'm sure you guys have heard of that cafe. So uh, it was in that period of us trying to learn how to run a cafe, um, we started realizing that, hey, after speaking to a lot of suppliers, speaking to a lot of people in the industry, there's going to be a cafe boom. Uh, meaning that a lot of people are looking to go into this industry. So when we're talking to someone who's selling an um, espresso machine, right? He will say, oh, you should buy, don't buy this one, buy this one. I have 10 orders coming in already. So everywhere we heard, there was like people buying a lot of machines. We we're like, holy shit, there's going to be a lot of cafes down the road. And that's when we decided to pivot. That's when we said, hey, let's, let's do something a little bit different. Uh, and then we thought about burgers because uh, me and my friend, uh, we used to cook at barbecues and we, we did burgers for, for our friends. Uh. And we said, let's do burgers uh, because you know in America, there's this brand called In-N-Out and Shake Shack, they're like so popular. Uh, but at the time, In-N-Out and Shake Shack in Malaysia, not really a lot of people have heard of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we said, let's, let's be that of Malaysia. And basically, that, that's how we started. So instead of learning how to run a cafe, we told Kyung and said, hey, look, can we borrow your kitchen? and uh, cook burgers to try out to see whether this is a business we can go into. So they were very generous. They said, okay, fine. Uh, rent my space for 100 ringgit a night. Right? And that's really the cheap. And you can use anything from their ingredients to their kitchen and whatnot. And we had 10 R&D sessions. Uh, that's where the charcoal bun was born. The charcoal bun was born out of necessity because we said, hey, look, we have so little money. If you open a restaurant, you know, uh, we won't have the, the, the time to, to build the fan base and whatnot. Let's do something that's different. Chaco bun was born during that period. And it was born out of an accident because I was toasting the bun and chow I forgot. Already. It literally got chowed out. <laughs> Obviously, I didn't serve that, but I thought the color looked really good. Ah. And then when I was shopping for um, ingredients, I saw that there was such a thing as a charcoal powder. And then I asked them what it was for. They said, oh, you add it into your bun. It gives it that really dark color. Uh, it's healthy and this and that. So we tried it and go like, oh, the, the, con- the color is shocking. Uh, and when we served it to our first batch of guests, they were like, ah, chow ta. They said, no, 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 bite into it and try it. Oh, it's, it's good, right? Honestly, there's no change in taste, no change in texture. But in their mind, it was like a more premium product. Mm. And we knew we hit a magical X factor, you know, mm. ingredient. And fast forward four months, five months, we opened up, uh, you know, my burger lab in Sea Park in on july 10 uh, of 2012 is 10 years right now mm-hmm. uh and uh, i think i guess the rest is history mm-hmm. right as for the behind the scene and whatnot it's pretty much like him as much as it's a burger uh we had to grind our own meat we had to buy our own ingredients we also went to nsk mm. uh you know i shop <laughs> at 2 a.m in the morning um baking buns was very difficult back then because we only had one oven and we can only bake 25 buns at a time so we were selling 150 burgers a day there, there, there was a lot of learning curve People think, oh, making food is easy. I just buy from supermarket, I open pack, I, I throw it in there together. But if you're going to run a restaurant, a lot of times you also want to put your own flair, you want to do your own thing. And it's cheaper to do your th- own thing sometimes, right? Uh, but doing your own thing takes so much effort. Mm. Just buns, honestly, looking back, I might have considered buying buns from somebody else mm. rather than doing it ourselves. But mm. since we've done it ourselves and it's already an ingrained a part of us, we continue doing so. But anyway, Long story short, that's how Burger Lab came to be. I was an engineer, didn't want to be an engineer, decided that food was a path that made me happy. And uh, yeah, luckily we found some level of success to, to today. Yes, I think this can be a whole episode. Right? Yes, it, it is. Talk about ourselves. Don't you guys? All right, June, what <laughs> so about you yourself? Just, okay, I'll, I'll keep it short. Yeah. I'll keep it short. We're on the first, first question still. So similar past, I guess, used to be a... Uh, I studied chemical engineering. Never really practiced chemical where engineering. Where did you study? Where, where? I studied yeah. in the UK. 
Uh, which university? I did, uh, which university? Culinary school? I don't know. After that, I did culinary hey, school. Which university? Which Come university? I in Cambridge. Okay, let's get <laughs> that over with. But then I did a uh, culinary <laughs> school. After that, um, and then worked in like a fine dining restaurant in New York called Blue Hill. And then after that, I came back to Malaysia. Worked at Table and Apron. Shout out. Uh, <laughs> oh. While I was working there, I started like doing a bit of food writing for a few publications uh, in New York because I made a few friends, made a few links there. Um, and then, yeah, from there, slowly transitioned into food writing. Uh, you were also on a very popular radio own. station, weren't you? Uh, yeah, then I started, like, somewhere during that time, I just started uh, doing, like, a small, like, BFM show. Um, oh, just a small yeah, BFM show lah. Just trying okay, to, okay. like, do it with them no, no, on, like, a weekly basis. Cut, cut, cut. Yeah. Then? I think um, you missed a very important point, like, how did... Cambridge Chemical Engineering then go work in a restaurant. Like, yeah, what what what, what the happened trigger? there? Yeah. Did your girlfriend at that yeah. time dumped you? Yeah, she's uh, like, you cannot cook, ah. I know you Cambridge, ah. I cannot cook. Ah. Then she's like, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I guess it was right? just something that. Yeah, what happened? Yeah. It's like when I, if I imagine myself in, let's say, like five, ten years in the future, right? I couldn't imagine myself working as a chemical engineer or even as, you know, a lot of people go into like. Uh, I guess like investment banking or consulting or whatnot, and I couldn't really imagine myself in those. So why FMB? Yeah, but why FMB? So in the beginning, it was just like a almost like a deferral or like postponing my adult life. I'm like, don't really know how to cook much, uh, but I'm like, I, I like eating stuff. I can cook like simple stuff. And in uni that time, me and my roommate like sometimes over weekends we'll we'll just cook a random full like fancy meal for ourselves and maybe for a few friends and so. And then, so after graduation, I was just like, huh, maybe I should just take one year off to just learn how to cook. Yeah, it would be like a good oh. life skill anyway. Yeah. So then when I went to like culinary school, I'm like, oh, I actually really like this. But then culinary school is nothing like working in a restaurant, right? So after that, then I'm like, I, I really like this like cooking, whole cooking shtick. So then, uh, so then I'm like, I think I want to try working in a real restaurant, but I know that's not what I want to do like long, long term. But it will still be cool, like industry experience, uh, regardless. So why then? And you say you love food, you love cooking food. Then what transition to hey, look, I want to create content for food. Yeah, because I mean, I I I, I guess like people are quite like, oh, I have a passion for food, right? I don't, don't really like using the word passion, but that's another thing. But uh, yeah. So I had that, but I knew I didn't want to be like a head chef of a restaurant, or like, or even right now, I don't feel like I want to be a restaurant owner. So then what other avenues can I explore besides that? Uh, and being a food writer was one of it. Uh, so I started like doing a bit more writing, um, mm. trying to learn about like the origins, history of certain foods, uh, food culture in Asia as well. Um, yeah, I just started writing about that, doing a bit of research, uh, pitching to magazines, uh, publications. Um, and yeah, just having a conversation with people and going out and interviewing people for uh, whether it's like a podcast or whether it's, it's some article I'm writing about the history of like, I guess like some nasi lemak or some like zi bao gai or some weird thing like that. Mm. Um, and from there, I'm like, oh, I really like this. Mm. Okay, yeah. So that's the first question. Oh my God, we took them long for Yeah, it's like, um, it's okay, like you guys a damn good idea. Maybe <laughs> cooking is easier. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just talk about ourselves one yeah, episode. Okay, okay, okay. Um, okay yeah. second question come from Nico Nix. Uh, what is your number one comfort meal? Oh my god. Uh, that no matter how bad your day is, when you have this, your mood will improve by like 3000%. Wow. Rinyi, you wanna go first? Uh, I think you might have the same answer. For me, a burger, long, uh, you do. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> for me, a long time ago, it was uh, fried chicken, any form of fried chicken. Oh, but okay. I, I don't know, I'm at an age uh, oh. where, oh, I'm 41. Uh, I'm at an age where your arteries are fried, a bit. Fried Clock. food don't sit so well uh, mm. after you know after digestion. Yeah, that, that used to be my comfort food. Like if I have a bad day, I, I, I'll go KFC and then table and bread. At one point, it was it was my go-to. Um, nowadays, honestly, home cooked Chinese food is mm. okay. speaks to my heart. Mm. It, and and sometimes if you don't get it, the next closest thing I can get is eat, whether a tai chao or a zhap fan. Mm. That speaks to me. Mm. For me is. In, it has never changed. Like, it's always been durian. Like, no way. Oh. Yeah, it's got everything in it. Like I, I think I think the reason why I like durian is because it works for me in so many levels. Like, it's, it has my childhood in it, in it because my uh, grandfather is a is a durian planter. Like. 
So I, I, I grew up having my holidays there uh, with the durian smells and everything. There are very, very simple things like, you know, like, uh, you know, like the durian shell has another kind of smell where it's, where it's more grassy. And then you like boil the durian shell. Ah, uh, yeah. You, yeah, it's all this. Yeah. And then you drink the water. Yeah, you drink the water. Oh, okay, but okay. some people just rub salt on it and, and drink the water. So it has that wide spectrum of smell. And then also towards the <clears> end of it, you get the more fermented, overripe durian smell. So uh, I think... Wow, when I eat it, uh, I cannot, I cannot, uh, like, I, I, I remember people always ask me, is it better than sex? I always say, times, ah. <laughs> times two. <laughs> for me, yeah, very rare for me to get this kind of experience. Uh, you know, like there are foods that really give you like a, how, how to say, orgasm, uh, like foodgasm. Uh, and this is like my ultimate. Uh, yeah. okay, okay, we have to do during episode. Wait, are we do, talking about comfort food or are we talking about foodgasm food? I feel that they are Sorry. two different I things. I think uh, for I'm, him it's everything. For me, durian comfort, is everything. It's everything. Uh, okay, all right, all right. Yeah. Uh, for me, uh, maybe I, my answer quite boring, but like ABC soup. Or like when I think of comfort oh. meal, right, it's like, okay. especially something that you have when you're sick, right? It's like ABC soup. ABC soup. Like damn hot. Mm. Like all the potatoes, the pepper and the soup. Oh, yeah. yeah, simple but really nice. That, 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 that spoke to my Chinese food side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, oh, that's good. Okay, on the opposite side of the spectrum, uh, Rebecca asks, what is the weirdest food you've eaten before? <laughs> and also in a similar vein, uh, Kyle, K-Y-L-L with two L's, asked, uh, what's, this is a weird way to put it, but what's the strangest thing you've put in your mouth? Uh, willingly or unwillingly? <laughs> 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 uh, you you want to go first, Tom? I think you have, you have great stories. Uh, <laughs> no, no. I, I think I, I don't know. My, I think I think you can choose not to answer the second one. It's okay. <laughs> I think I think because my my uh, my grandfather is a is a durian planter. I saw he's like kamp- really damn kampung lah. So I remember he would uh, he would stand he would stand at the about evening time he would stand with a long bamboo uh, pole uh, waiting for the um, bat to pass by. So uh, uh, the bat will hit the <laughs> will hit the pole or the bird will hit the pole, and then Wait, it will fall down. Yeah, either doesn't matter. Whatever bird, they uh, catch, uh, they yeah. lah. Because oh, shit. <laughs> because what they, what what they do is they study the root of the bats of or the bird, yeah. and then they adjust the pole so that you will they will hit it. So but the pole so thin. No, the ba- bamboo. Yeah, oh. yeah, yeah. So you have to adjust lah. I so thought you, bats yeah. have like sonar and yeah, whatnot. Yeah. Okay, but then uh, anyway, okay, okay, assuming okay, okay. it works, yeah. okay. One day I was like, uh, uh, my mom woke me up uh, and said like, oh, got supper. Then I just whacked the whole thing like, I thought like, wow, it's damn tasty. Man. It was actually bad lah. Oh, I this sucked is, the back. I sucked the back. This is the origin the story yeah. of uh, Batman. Batman. No, <laughs> COVID. <laughs> Actually, it is the origin story of COVID. I mean, that's how it, that's how yeah, these yeah, kind of yeah, things yeah. happen. But back then, it's like survival. Uh, you have to eat everything. Yeah. So I think if you ask me, what's the weirdest experience, like culinary experience, it was just literally sucking the you know like the back flap <laughs> of the bone. Yeah. It was it's something like sucking the goose leg lah. The goose feet, ah, yeah, okay. yeah, something like that texture. Like, like taste, how they taste? Not wow, that. them yummy. Oh, yeah. okay, I mean, okay. yeah, then my mom like, that's a bat. I'm like, what? And I saw the head inside the soup. I'm like, damn. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Okay, ready? There you go. Um, I, I'll tell two two or three stories. Lah. One one is uh, when I was in Cambodia, they were selling uh, fried insects that's coated in like sweet sauce and whatnot uh-huh. uh, over there. And I was like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm all game for it. Like. I said, look, let's, let's be a local. Let's eat what the locals eat. So I was hanging out with uh, you know, a group of the Cambodians uh, that were bringing us around. I said, hey, look, I, I want to try that. Go, can you buy some for us? Then he bought some and I started, oh yeah, you know, let's, let's eat. So I was the only one that's grabbing for it. I said, hey, you guys don't eat this. I said, no, we locals don't eat this. <laughs> <laughs> so there were a few things that they got, right? There was the, the, uh, the grubby stuff yeah, and whatnot. Yeah. And then I went for the tarantula. Uh, Ooh, what actually, how is this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Continue, continue. Oh, it's crispy. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to know. It's crispy. It's deep, deep, fried. deep fried. I think it's deep fried. Okay. You don't see the process. It's already like done and packed, uh, right? Okay. Uh, it's like on the trays and whatnot. And and uh, I had everything else. Um, the the worst one was this. Uh, it had it has this sack. Like, you bite into it, it bursts. Like, it wasn't good tasting at all. Like. Mm. Right? I forgot what it was. But why I'm not talk? Why I want to talk about tarantula? And for everyone else out there, I think you should avoid it in case you got an allergic reaction. Oh. I did. My whole face, my throat got swollen. Oh. I thought I was gonna die. Okay. Yeah. So I don't know if it was an allergic reaction or they didn't remove the poison sac or whatever. Oh. 
right? But that was what triggered, and Whoa. that was a horrible experience. Yeah. Uh, but I think it's quite common that people have had yeah, this before. Insects, uh, yeah. uh, I guess the weirdest one that I was unwilling, I, I, I not forcefully. What did I say forcefully? I think forcefully, right? And it's, and it's on this show, not <laughs> on this show. <laughs> I don't take away, the series, I right? Know what it was so scary. they were doing a boba series. <laughs> Alright, so two things that really stood out that was really, really bad that they fed me. So they basically blended uh, some mystery flavor inside. One was chak fan. It was chak fan boba. Oh, and it's not okay. Yeah, it's okay. It's, no, it's not okay. No, no, it sounds like bad, but it's still normal food. It's still food. What, what, what it's still edible. What was the set out? Like, what's the point of doing so that? So they wanted me to guess the flavors. Okay, which is what we're going to do later, I think. <laughs> so, fan flavor. I was like, hmm, this one's very savory. Uh. Later on, I found out it was Bites are fun with curry and vegetable. Blend it together, sip oh. it. Yeah. I hear about that last and one. This is, oh, like, this is like four years, five years ago. I still remember exactly. vividly, okay? Then the last one. Oh, hey. tastes like cricket. Huh? I had this experience in Cambodia before. <laughs> <laughs> this one is not fried cricket because I guess fried uh. cricket or fried shrimp. Right? Uh-huh. And? Oh, I cannot. <laughs> oh. But it's not a, they, they guarantee wait, wait, wait. me that. In Malaysia. In Malaysia. Oh. Apparently, uh. humans also can eat. But it's not the same kata that you see. Why? I mean, it's it's uh, the Madagascar why? one, right? Or No, it's not the Madagascar one. I, I th- it was another breed. It's not the usual type. It's, it's like, like a, a usual roach, type. Uh, like a ro- it's a okay. roach family. La. Is it deep fried or what? Or they blend it fresh blend for you? It. I think they dried it. I don't know. I don't want to know. Okay. Um, <sighs> but it didn't... It wasn't the... It tasted worse. But it was the thought that... Then they showed me the box of live cockroaches that was... Because they, they didn't use all of <laughs> my... Like, oh, Who made this? Vivian, was it you? But thankfully, the, oh the brothers, they also had uh, it. Uh, uh, we have a... Uh, Blind Fortings says after this. Uh, <laughs> this and they are preparing uh, for us, right? Right? Mine is not so... Not as crazy. La, but I think... I mean, I've had like insects or that stuff. Never had like a allergic reaction, thankfully. But I think in terms of like weirdest like meats, I've had maybe like a... Whale, whale meat. Oh, mm. whale. Well. Yeah. Oh. Fresh can or... Uh, it was like grilled. Does it taste like beef? A bit, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. It tastes quite it's like gamey. It it's tastes like mammal. Oh. It's a mammal, yeah. And also, uh, in the same place, this was in like a trip in Europe. Uh, oh. It was a, a puffin. Oh, wow. Like, you know, the puffin, bird. yeah, yeah. The bird? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah quite sad. Yeah. Yeah. Quite cute, the bird. Yeah. That, is that the one where they, they, they ferment it first? No, 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 no ferment. Oh. And this oh. is all like... Uh, Oh. Pretty like fresh. Like. But okay. puffin is not endangered, are they? They are. You can only get it on that one island. Really? Yeah, and then they use. Ah, like I've never tasted the puffin. Catch <laughs> <those>. <laughs> mm. I remember. Okay, this is one of the weirdest experiences. I know this is a tangent. I remember when I was young, I had I I go to school via Bascola, right? So one day the Bascola lady she was <laughs> ri- driving, and then boom, she ate something big, huge. And then we, we all came up, uh, went out the, the bus collar to see what's happening. Whoa, fuck man, it was a lizard this huge. Oh, okay, okay. And then you took it home. Ah, she, <laughs> she was like so slumber, I walked to a lizard. Oh, them tasty, this are poor. I want to show them, put it at the back of the van. I'm like, wow, that one, that one, like, yeah. that one. <laughs> Sarawak thing, yeah. Sarawak thing. So, yeah, my mom said in Sarawak, like, sometimes a lot of this. Uh, wow, meat or whatever is oh, actually yeah. rock kill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's go into some uh, cooking questions that you guys sent in as well. Alright. Okay. Um, so, I love calculus, that's a username. Interesting, all these usernames. Uh, ask uh, if you had 30 minutes to whip up a meal, what would you cook? And uh, I guess like a lot of these questions are in a similar vein as so. well. There's a uh, Nico Nico Nick that asks, uh, what are some main things, uh, what are some mains that lazy people can prepare without putting in too much time and effort? Just similar, yeah. Some quick meals that you will cook. For me, uh, I would I would do. Again, are we talking about gourmet shit or are we just talking about making? Anything I cook for yourself. Thirty minutes. Yeah, making me. Yeah, sure. You make me. I I think we can whip up. Uh, also, in my in my house, we have um, like leftover rice. Uh, we have. In fact, this is a trick that I started doing recently. Go to Hai Ti Lao, right? I asked for the soup to tap out home one. Oh. Yeah, and then. With that, I can whip up noodles, I can whip up a stew because we have frozen meat and whatnot, just chuck it in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was going to say miso pasta. Oh. Oh. Learn from Tim and Ipen. That's pasta. good stuff. Yeah. That's good stuff. Very easy. 30 minutes. Yeah, I think 30 minutes you can make it. Some mushrooms in a pan, fry it. Do like a miso and butter uh, and a bit of cream or milk. Yep. Salt and pepper, you're good to go. Cook your pasta and then just combine everything together. Done. So yeah. good. Huh? Uh, just go to McDonald's, man. <laughs> hey, you're you supposed to cooking, man. Uh, no, he's like, 30, 30 minutes, minutes drive. <laughs> 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 they said to whip up a meal. 
<laughs> nah, 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 I think for, for me, for, I think for me the the easiest one, of course, I think all Malaysians do this lah. Is uh, uh, sorry, is uh, instant noodle lah, right? Yeah, yeah. You can see it, the, the. But we have one one episode where we we upped instant noodle, uh, right? Yeah, yeah. You can so, see one of first episode. Yeah. So yeah, the I mean, earliest one. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, we don't talk about just instant noodle, mm. like just. Add the packet and, and we're done, right? We can elevate yeah. it. And gourmet it. Yeah. But still, I think if you ask me, right, if you really, really boil it down, my fridge, right, will always, always have eggs. Because I think the best uh, meal, the best quick meal that you can cook, right, is always eggs. Right? Because there's so many ways to cook eggs. And mm. it's like protein and you can do so many things with it. You can, you can uh, fry rice with it. You can just have eggs alone. And even that also, you got many styles to do also, yeah. So mm. I always, always have eggs in my fridge. Like everything else, run out is okay, but no eggs ah uh, die. <laughs> mm. right, but fried rice, uh, noodle, soupy stuff, really easy, and you can elevate it so easily. ABC soup also. Right? Yeah, I think it's the ingredients that you should yeah. have around. But yeah. ABC soup does take longer than thirty minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Unless you parboil all the vegetable, and then put it on your pot and just cook all together. Yeah, but thirty minutes can 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 whip it up uh, in time. Can. Uh, Next question. Uh, Wait, did he give me an answer? Yeah, he didn't. Yeah, my miso, my, my miso, miso, miso pasta. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we need to check. <laughs> okay, Crystal not Crystal asked, please give one reasonably reasonably priced non-stick pan that isn't Tefal. Wow, this one. My answer is uh, IKEA. Mm. IKEA pans are pretty durable, very durable in fact, yeah. and very good quality as well. Yeah. Um, I, I think just now prior to this, we had a conversation about you know what about buying from online this and that. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say Shopee. That, yeah. But yeah, it's like a it's a hit and miss. It's a gamble. Uh, it's a gamble. I've bought yeah. a few even nice and and whatnot, and uh, I think the, you had the worst story. Maybe you oh, want to yeah, share yeah, that. Yeah. So my uncle bought a cast iron pan from <laughs> Shopee or something. How much? Do you know? <laughs> no, sure. I think it was like more than hundred, maybe two hundred. Are you kidding me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then maybe a hundred, hundred plus, hundred plus. Okay. Plus, uh, it's a cast iron pen. Yeah. It's all like, but it's one of those weird ones where there's not a lot of reviews, but they're selling it for like hundred plus. Okay, trust us. Just try, right? You can return or not. In the end, what he got was a cast iron pen keychain. <laughs> That's a scam. Uh, that's a real yeah, scam. That's a, scam. That's a real scam. Thickness, thickness mm. of the pen matters a lot. So I bought one pen, uh, for twenty ringgit. I was looking just for a single like smaller thin. pen. Mm. Yes, the, the problem is the the and it's a, for induction cooking, right? Uh, so because the bottom is so thin, even if you cook soup, right, the noodle just needs to stuck at the bottom. It, it burns already. Yes. Yeah. So you need a thick base for the heat distribution. Mm. Yeah, but IKEA, uh, all my pens so far from IKEA, I can abuse it and whatnot. Last two three years, mm. no problem. I I would say. Go, go for that. Uh, Liam asked how to make a fail-proof sponge cake. <laughs> oh, I'm not familiar with that actually. June probably knows. Yeah. You make cakes, but anything you make can fail, uh, honestly. Um, I but, think maybe you can provide what to watch out for. Yeah. Can I ask you this? Is it because like people who do commercial sponge cake, right? They put in a stabilizer so that the egg white doesn't collapse. Like a, I think it's called what cream can, of tartar yeah, or something. Yeah, cream of tartar. Yeah, you yeah, can yeah. use that in like a lot of uh, home baking. Use that as well. Though. Cream of tartar. So will help. Okay. Mm, then stabilize yeah. the egg whites or your foam. Yeah. Um, Huh, but it's a fail proof, it's very hard to not fail at stuff. But I think it's like it comes with experience, right? A lot of these things. I think reliable recipes is number one. Because yes, you're gonna start somewhere. Recipes, yeah. A Go lot of to, recipes yeah. online are quite yeah, crap. Yeah, yeah, a quite site that you yeah. trust with a yeah. lot of reviews. Yes, yeah. exactly. A yeah. lot of comments actually. Yes. So sometimes <laughs> the comment section of the recipe will help a lot. Like everyone will try different slightly different ways, everyone's kitchen is slightly different, right? Yeah. So the comment section, if the comment section is active for mm. that particular recipe, uh it's usually really helpful. Yeah. Uh, as opposed to like I say if you see like at allrecipes.com yeah. or something where there's a lot of reviews. <laughs> so he didn't miss there, man. But the comments are like not very active. That one is yeah. um, although you see like oh the reviews are like four four point five stars yeah. or something. It could be one review I, only. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Actually, I would say right. Uh, maybe this is just speaking from experience. What I learned through the years is, you ne- uh, a recipe is is just a guide. Mm, like, mm, mm, rather mm. than follow it. Uh, uh, to the T. To the T. Is actually you need to understand uh, what you need to look out for. So for example, example in this sponge cake, like why do you think it, it fails? For me, uh, from just by uh, doing it a few times, I realized right if at the stage where you are beating your egg 
and and you can't. Well, there's a test right where you have to do put the thing on top ah, of your head. So the strength of your the strength of these uh, egg whites are uh, you you roughly know already whether you will fail or not. So so you need to know like uh, what what kind of what kind of feel what kind of what kind of uh, egg white texture it is. So when you mix in your flour and everything also, from the batter you already know you should roughly know already whether you are doing it right or wrong mm. already. Yeah, but mm. but I think at the end it's still practice. Makes perfect lah. Yeah. Mm. Practice a few times, you you understand. Really. Actually, yeah. I, I got I have the answer. <laughs> you buy those ready made. Uh, <laughs> hey, <laughs> crocker, uh, Betty Crocker. <laughs> yeah, ready made uh, cake, cake mix. mix. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Just yeah. add water, add milk. You're you're oh good, my right? God, that's a scam. I mean, if you really want to. Yes, now here's yes. the thing about sponge cake. Now, if you're just making sponge cake on its own, to make a really good one. I, I think there's some level of technicality. Mm, mm, like, you don't mm. dress it up and whatnot, right? And you just need it for layering. Get get the cake in the box. Yeah. Sure, sure. Mm. Right, I think that makes sense. Quick one. Uh, let's use a name. It's very long. Help me, help me. Re- resin reset in fifteen minutes. Uh, That's the okay. 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 That's the username. <laughs> That's not a question. Um, what is the best vegetarian meal or restaurant? Uh, I really like Veggie Licious. Not bad. Okay. Veggie Licious. Uh, oh. Well, I I only go to one. Salah. Oh, you like Salah? Yeah, I like the burrito wrap. Okay. Uh, and their rendang, nasi lemak, the, the rendang is damn good. Uh, yeah, it's made out of uh, lion's head main. Lion's main. Lion's main. Yeah, yeah lion's mushroom. Main mushrooms. So good. Mm-hmm. Huh? I, I like the Sinako durian specialist. <laughs> That's vegetarian. <laughs> That's vegetarian. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. <laughs> the rest don't bother. Oh, okay. And you also asked about, uh, same person also asked about plant-based food. Uh, what are plant-based food? I think to find out about this, you oh. can check out our vegan episode, uh, which was a few episodes ago. Uh, yeah. But yeah, we talk about, we tried a bunch of vegan meats. Yeah, uh, I talked about it a lot. It's a very, very deep subject, bro. Yeah, this very one, deep, very wow, deep. I can yeah. talk for days. Yeah. Well, we did talk, talk yeah. about it. Yeah. Yeah. Moving on to some business questions. Oh, yo. Uh, Kwaksano Langmui asks, is there... All these, all these usernames, man. Is there any <laughs> secret menu in your restaurants uh, for us to try? It's a secret, bro. It's a yeah. secret. You cannot ask for a secret menu uh, in a the public setting. Secrets, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I think I, I'll give you one tip, though. Every restaurant has a secret menu. The only thing you need to do is you need to go f- be friend with the owner. Confirm got one. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that, yeah. Hope that answers your Just question. Just need to be polite. Be friends with uh, these two. <laughs> so we do have secret menus back yeah. in the days. Oh, now yeah. the, because it became so popular, it, it went up on the on the menu. Uh, <laughs> Who was it? Uh? One was it was Elvis. Oh, Elvis yeah, used to be on the secret menu. menu. Then it became uh, yeah. a popular thing. Uh, uh, but we 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 have a secret kitchen. Uh, yeah. If you happen to stumble upon me and I happen to be cooking. Uh, I cook mm. omakase burgers for, uh, for those lucky few. So people, people just have to find the secret kitchen, eh? uh, They have to find me, la. Find and you. I happen to be working, la. Next question, uh, Melvin's Chima asks, Wow, oh, this is a big one. Yeah, this is a food review. One. What's your take on food reviewers who review based off one visit to a restaurant? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I think I'll start off by saying, okay. Uh, by, okay, okay. by talking about the reason why I don't really do food reviews. Mm, um, that's a good way to do it. For me, food is so subjective, right? Where one person's opinion, uh, if you give one person the power to make or break the success of a restaurant, it seems a bit unfair to me. So in a lot of my food writing, I don't really go to a restaurant and say, hey, this place is like uh, good, this place is bad. Like I sure I sometimes like post on Instagram or something, if I go to a restaurant and I really like, oh my God, this, this random food is really, like, really nice, this dish. Um, but it's like really casual. Um, I, would, I wouldn't really review a restaurant like officially just yep. because I don't think it's fair for my opinion to influence like many other people's opinion of this restaurant and and it might um, make their business suffer. But, but here's the thing, I don't think there needs to be a duality in this situation. I'll give you one example. Uh, Adrian KL, from mm-hmm, back in mm-hmm. the days, I, I haven't read them in a while, mm. uh, but back in the days, you, he never writes, at least when Sean was, was still writing, he never writes bad about a restaurant. But you can tr- read through his writing yeah. that he doesn't recommend it fully, but he'll still say nice things. But that's not a food much. review. But, but, to but, me, it's but, not but, a but, review. But hear me out, hear me out. I'm just saying, that's, that's one spectrum, right? Mm. But you can know when he loves something and he really gushes about it. You, you as a reader, you make your decision, yeah. right? However, uh, that being said, I do agree with you. Uh, someone with a strong following can make or break a restaurant. Mm, mm, but, mm. but here's the thing. Like, like if you want to do reviewing, mm. right, and you choose it as a career because you are actively, yeah. you're going to make money off it, right? Uh, and if your goal is to say, hey, look, let's find good food, let's share mm. good food, okay, then write about good food only. Lah. Because there are off days, ma. restaurants good and bad. Mm. And there are sure, bad sure, sure. restaurants where 
they should close down and they should yeah. not you know serve yeah. their food because mm. whether hygiene or taste wise mm. right uh, but I think overall everyone that opens a business is sincerely trying to to, yeah. to, to serve yeah. good food mm. so and you are saying hey look if if it's bad I need to tell people so that you know I, my fans don't go to this restaurant ma. Yeah, you should go maybe at least like three times, five times. You should be like a regular, but like, but like if you, you said, making people have off days. Yeah, but if you're making a content, um, can you number one? Reviews. Can you afford it? Mm. Because if they give you free food, it's very hard for you to write bad things, and yeah, you have to pay for it yourself. Yeah, Would you yeah. go back to a restaurant where you have to spend let's say hundred ringgit per mm. person and three times just to give it a shot? But it turns mm. out three times also sucks. Yeah. Right? So re- food reverse also don't do that. So yes, they do base correct. it on one shot, right? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But it's not fair. Mm. The answer is it's not fair. But I also can understand why they cannot review visit so many they want new content every time mm. and in fact they will try to go to a new restaurant every day yes correct. It's, it's for me it's more like i i really care about the intent right so it can it can be a really bad execution but the, if the intent or the concept is very interesting to me for me i think there's a there's a worthy restaurant for me to to recommend to other people mm. or to do a review on mm. yeah I don't really necessarily need to need to find the uh, a perfect restaurant in order to give it good marks, or I don't really need to bash on people who maybe just started the restaurant but then they fell on execution. Then I would like I don't see the point of telling everyone this this restaurant is a is a is a is a one star or two star. I mean I don't see the point in it. But I do I do feel there are some times where I feel a lot of people put marketing into restaurant or selling food which are. Uh, purposefully deceitful. I think that is the only time I would actually tell people don't go there or this restaurant is no good. It's only when I feel it is pur- purposefully done to to misguide or manipulate uh, uh, the customer. Then that's the only time I would say. Mm. In this new generation of food reviewers, whether it's on TikTok or on Instagram, mm. we first need to ask how are they making their money? I think as a yeah, food writer yeah. back in the days, let's say they write for a column in the star, the star pay them for every column. That's a good written, point. Right? This is a very good point. Now yeah. they they will start off doing their own thing. Yeah. You know, I pay for the food and this and that. But it will come to a point where a restaurant will go like, hey, let me mm. pay you. Yeah, yeah. Now, nowadays, one Instagram email. post, yeah. right, on uh, any popular food uh, reviewer, mm. uh, uh, not reviewer, but it could be a media post like let's say KL Foodie mm. and. and it, Drink care, you know all those, right? It can go up to three thousand to five thousand ringgit for one post. Mm. I better be a food. So, <laughs> now, yeah, it's a so big like and if conflict of paying, interest there. They won't say anything bad. They they can't. Yeah. They simply can't. They already accepted the money, ma. And I've never seen, from my understanding, anyone rejecting a, a sponsored post. A lot of Malaysian Sorry. reviews are more like marketing material rather mm. than a, what I would think as a review. Right. It's a promoting like, yes, review it's right. damn deep topic. Right? Yeah, okay, yeah. this is damn deep topic. Yeah. We spent a lot of time on this already. <laughs> but uh, yeah. She's regretting this. That's actually... <laughs> She's like, this Q&A is turning yeah, into like, oh, yeah. we focus on just three things. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, okay. So there are a few other questions that I think will also take a really long time. But yeah. I think we can turn this into full-on episodes for the next season. So there are a few questions that, um, let's say, Crystal or Crystal sent in uh, a spicy one. Why do most re- uh, why do most cafes that are aesthetically pleasing have terrible food? <sighs> okay, before you guys comment <laughs> anything, this is an example of something we might talk and uh, talk about in the next season. Um, uh, there's also one by Benjamin Yong five five two who asks uh, why as Malaysians we are not really satisfied with our, with our own local food and why do we desire uh, food of other cultures like Korean or Japanese or even Western food? I, I guess like there's a whole like placing other cuisines on a pedestal sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and I think that is a really good topic to, to dive into as well. Um, but just to end, uh, as a final bonus spicy question, Susu asked, does human meat taste good? <laughs> well, well, just, well, <laughs> jokes aside, I don't think anyone of, uh, or anyone of us here will eat human meat, right? Um, I, I think that's just this idea of eating a fellow human flesh that that this immediately generates a gag experience, right? Yeah, but yeah. if we take the the question seriously, mm. right, as a very objective, uh, mm. you know, from a very objective perspective, I think humans we eat well, yeah. we live well. From so that one, this is wagyu Kobe yeah. right here. <laughs> this is eight <A-tank>. right. <laughs> uh, Recently, I read a, I think it was a Munchies or a Vice article. Uh, he mm. uh, got into an accident, had to amputate his leg, right? Okay. Serious? So he asked the doctor, Doctor, can I take my leg home? Oh, he's God. Like, and, oh. he's, so he, and he has a friend as a chef. So he took his leg home and said, like, Can you make something out of this? The, Are you serious? Chef friend was like, ah, It's a bit weird, huh? but okay. 
So you know what they make? They made like tacos. Oh, okay. are you serious? Yeah. And he invited a bunch of his friends. With them uh, knowing or without knowing? With them knowing. They, okay. Everyone knows that exists. Okay, so this one morally is a very gray yeah. area because if the they permission both agree, yeah, yeah, was given, my right? Leg, I, I serve you my leg. So they interview him and he was like, oh yeah, it, it's a way, it's a good way for me to, to it's cope, twisted. To cope for, with the yeah. loss of my leg. Oh, it's twisted, yeah, yeah. but if all, Taco, so, if all parties so involved are okay with it, I guess yeah. who are we to judge, right? And it was, by all aspects, it was ethical lah. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, but okay, yeah. Susu, uh, human meat might taste good. But if you want to try it, yeah. try, try it on yourself. Yeah. I got another question. You know that thing where uh, it, was, it was viral for a while, right? That, the breast milk cappuccino. Would you drink it? <laughs> what? Oh, man. I think I will. Yeah. Yeah. Just to try. Just to try. Yeah. Would you drink it? I'm, I don't know, I feel like my my, my brain is just blocking me from it. I don't see how breast milk will foam well. Sorry, <laughs> that's what the virus are. I don't think Okay. Okay, let's move on to our bonus section. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so So you wouldn't make good food. We took a long time with this QA section, but oh uh, yeah, God. we were we were supposed to do a blindfold taste test to at the end. Just a fun um session, segment uh. for, for us. La. So essentially we each brought three mystery ingredients and we're going to blindfold the other two. Uh, we're going to feed each other stuff. Yeah. People gonna are going to go like, oh, taste. that's why this show called Taste Buddies. Yeah, so we call ourselves Taste Buddies but we haven't, haven't actually like, tested our taste buds. It's going right. to turn into a long So episode. do we all put our blindfolds up? Okay, yeah. let's go. Okay. Okay, so this is the first one. First item. Okay, uh, here. The production team brought it for us. production team. Okay. We have no idea what it is. I'm showing the camera. <laughs> camera, can you see it or not? You shake it. Huh? This is a snack, it's not an ingredient. <laughs> what is it? I want more. <laughs> okay, I'll be one, two, three, then we all say it. Say it at once, okay? One, two, three. Sugar Honey Honey biscuit. Is... Sugar fried mihun. <laughs> what? It's actually kuih jala. Oh. 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 Wow. Looks like a stringy, stringy texture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know the name, so what is one? Alright, let's go. Ingredient number two. Whoa. Plastic paper. The hell is this, bro? Am I good? Am I good? <coughs> is this made of cockroach? Ah? <laughs> cockroach wings. <laughs> Maka, you don't scare me. What the f is this? <coughs> hey, like eat slot tap like that. Wow, where did they find this kind of weird and shit? Fuchok, fuchok. Fuchok ah, probably ah. Oh. 3, 2, 1. Fuchok skin. Rice paper. You think it's a soy product? Fuchok skin ah. Keep saying that shit. <laughs> the way they are laughing. Oh, oh okay. Cockroach wings. Use condom. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, oh, oh, shit! Can we open? I want to see. Yeah. Can you open? Oh, really? It's Vucho, eh? Ayo. Eh, hey, but really look like cockroach uh, wings, eh? Not bad. This one is a good one. This one is a good one. I've never, bad, like I actually never, never eat it like that. Yeah, before. I will never eat it like that. Oh, it smells so familiar. Well, I don't say anything yet. Me? Eh? Sounds so? familiar. You're right. What is it? Not that I think cockroach, eh? <laughs> Bro. Cockroach. Oh my god, I'm so scared now. It's no, no, no. I know cockroach is. This is not cockroach. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, 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 Two, one. Wages. I have nothing. Wages? <laughs> any, any other hints? Okay, I can give you one, one hint, but you... Ah, oh, 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 wait, wait. <laughs> okay, do one last one. Ah, it has corn in it. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Okay, yeah. okay. okay. Cool. Nachos! Ah. Nachos! Ah. Is it nachos? Hey, it smells like that. Yeah. Okay, oh, I'll give you half a point. <laughs> hey, hey, I guess corn eh. Half a point. Half is the closest one. Uh, uh, Doritos. Doritos. Uh, Doritos. Uh, Doritos. Uh, that's a good one. Into water. Uh, that's uh, a good one. Why does it taste so nasty? Yeah, I think Doritos <laughs> is nasty. The whole ingredient went down with two points. Fine. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Let him win. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, now we're going to challenge each other. Who wants yes. to go first? Yeah. I can go first. Okay, here. Yeah. This is the first one. Eh? Oh man, why is it so hard to guess? Grapes? <laughs> grapes. Plum or grapes? Yeah. Why does it taste like grapes? Plum is same like corn, corn, yeah, grape, yeah, I think. 
Grapes. The center of the grapes. I'd say plum. Final answer? Right. Yeah. So, which one is it? <laughs> oh, wow. So, big at the grape. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, okay, okay. I think usually the first guess is correct, man. Don't think, don't think oh, so much. Don't overthink it. Ni macam... Wait. Ya, apa ni? The brain nut. Random, all this. The brain nut. Random. Walnut. Walnut, ah. Lock hey, it. so easy, man. Lock it in. Yes, walnut, walnut. Cikgu, yeah, dia tiru my answer. Hey, I said brain nuts first, okay? <laughs> very easy, lah, all this. Yeah, let's yeah. go, let's go. Okay, okay, okay. okay. This episode my is... Turn, my turn, your turn. Anytime. You first, ah. Yeah, I, I assume you have something more interesting. Ah. Mine is <laughs> my, around his yeah, level. Mine is very safe. My very safe. Okay, item number one is liquid form. Yeah, My theme of the day is oh. it's oh, not what mean. you think it is. Oh, it's yeah. liquid form. Ah. Okay. Hey, this smells like the Doritos again. <laughs> <laughs> Doritos soup. Okay. I think I know. It's really a, it's a freaking Doritos soup. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Juice is confused. My brain, my brain, I cannot escape the Doritos anymore. Why is it sweet? But why is it Doritos? Okay, three, ah. two, one, answer. Milk. Milk. <laughs> uh, it's uh, oat milk. Oh. Okay, this one is, uh, you gotta hold it and eat it. Okay. 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 I'm gonna put it in front of you. Huh? Citrus. Citrusy, yeah. Gaumoa, something so easy. Okay, go for it. Say Doritos. <laughs> yeah. Why are you why are you a coke again? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is definitely is orange idea. Really. But say it's not what you think it is. Three, two, one. Orange. Fruit. June got the point. Great fruit. Oh. <laughs> okay, this one. Imagine the first one is milk, but not all you think it is. It's breast milk. <laughs> <laughs> Una la bro. But it's not what we think it is. I did and my pop is the body. <laughs> so I didn't, ah, bro. That's not what you think. Three, two, one. Sardine. Ten sardine, yeah. Okay, open your eyes. It's mackerel. Yeah. I but said, it's not sardine. I said oh. mackerel just now, I win. Yeah, but you. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of times, I can't tell, taste the difference between sardine and mackerel. Aren't sardines small mackerels? I don't know. But they sell two different cans side by side, yeah? It's different, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah so my okay, idea okay, is. Okay. Milk, but not milk. Orange, but not orange. Sardine, but not sardine. Okay. Mm. All right, that's what's the team. Let's go. My turn. This one, no, no team one. Just random stuff I found in my fridge. <laughs> Even then, we <laughs> don't it, know what is. Has it gone past the expiry date? It's an evil laugh. I cannot. Oh, no. <laughs> Apple, ah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Why are you laughing? Three, yeah. two, one. Bam. Okay, that was an easy one. <laughs> oh. Oh, new cut. Hmm. Wow. So many things, man. Is that like onion? Uh. What the f? Oh, I know. Ah, June knows. Good. What does it smell like? Smelly armpit. Eh? Yeah, describe the smell. Describe. You should describe the smell. So pungent. Ah, uh, eh? Huh? Ah. Uh. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay, okay. I know, I know. One, two, three. Boss Ah, good one. Is it that snake skin like? Yes. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> does, that, does my answer count? <laughs> okay, so we just did a blind taste test. Uh, Vivian has a score. I know I didn't do very well, but what was your. <laughs> before we review the winner, uh, what was your. What are your thoughts about it? Thoughts, uh. It's hard to know what you eat. Yeah, it's surprising. Yeah. 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 We, we do yeah. associate taste with visual... Um, yeah, the visual cue is quite Yeah, important. the visual cue. Mm. Exactly. And a lot of things smell like Doritos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wow. so who, who are the winners, Vivian? Okay, so we have a tie. But I would just like announce uh, who is the... Like, who is the loser? Like, la. Like, <laughs> no, not really loser. It's a very close one. La. So coming in at three and a half points, Oh. Hey. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm the last one. Wait, no. I thought I last? Apparently. Yeah. So my Doritos? Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> now he's happy. Yeah. Ah, okay. <laughs> so, you and Annie, you go for four points. Oh, okay. Uh, hey. Very nice one, yeah. Wait, but what's your takeaway? Hong has a worse palette than us. Huh? <laughs> 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 okay. 
Yeah, but this was really fun actually. Uh, well, for us uh, at least. Uh. I hope it was fun for <laughs> yeah, you all. So. Hopefully it was enjoyable to watch. Yeah. <laughs> Next season, we, maybe we can do more like blindfold tastings, uh, maybe comparing different foods and answering some of the questions that you guys sent in. Uh, so what about what about us going out to eat? What, what do you think? Do, do, do you guys want to see that? Us going Confirm out? And, it's, not about, it's not a review, but just going out and enjoying food and, and just talking about food. Yeah, maybe. maybe. Yeah? Let's, let's, let's see if that's but something. it's not a review, right? Uh, it's not a review, it's, it's just... A review. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, maybe we'll do that. So yeah. I think we have some exciting plans for uh, next uh, season as well. And if you guys have any uh, suggestions, anything you want us to talk about as well, do send them yeah. in. Or you um, feel like what can be better in this whole season, let us know. Um, mm. And you know, it's been fun uh, creating this content for you guys. I think it's just us hanging out. Yeah, honestly, yeah, in the beginning, we were just doing this like for our own yeah. fun, for our own enjoyment. Tell you what, since it's the last episode, remember the kimchi we made? Oh! Should we hold that oh. and actually try it and see whether it's good or not? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Alright, let's yeah, do that. Yeah. Mm. I don't know if it's better than kimchi out there. It's actually very lacking in taste, in my opinion. I think it's a bit lacking. Like severely lacking. Really? Yeah. Not enough fermentation. Not, not, no sourness. Hey. Not enough salt. Not enough salt only, right. la, I think. Mm. But <coughs> this is the only product of our <laughs> season, I guess. <laughs> If any of you all want to buy this, it will be on our merch. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for uh, watching all our episodes so far. Uh, if you want to keep in touch with us, um, yeah, just message us, <laughs> leave us a review, leave us feedback, uh, stuff like that. But yeah, thanks so much for watching again, and we'll see you guys next season. Ciao! Ciao guys.